Hello everybody, it's Carlin here from the Real Outdoor Experience. This episode contains raw footage of Ian Field dressing a white-tailed deer. Although a very real and necessary part of deer hunting, the footage you are about to see may be disturbing to some viewers, and therefore, viewer discretion is advised. Archery deer hunting for beginners is brought to you by Rack Stacker Big Game Attractants, Fast Track Performance, Kent Cartridge, Vortex Optics, Mossberg Firearms, Bullseye London, and the Nook Professional Cases. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us. It's Carlin and Ian from The Real Outdoor Experience. We're going to talk about field dressing. It's quite a process if you've never done it before, so we'll kind of walk you through it a little bit here, give you some helpful hints. It is such an important episode. Doing it properly is going to be the difference between enjoying the meat that you've harvested or everybody just turning up their nose at it and stating to everybody that they know how awful venison tastes. <laughs> well, we're going to try and help alleviate that whole thing. So stand by, we'll get right back to it. a little bit bittersweet at this moment you know I've uh, taken a lot of deer and the, uh, the feeling never changes it's uh, a little bit sad to see something like that but uh, you know what we will eat absolutely every scrap of this deer the silver skin and the fat and the pieces that we don't eat will get cooked up and fed to our pets we eat absolutely every scrap so I want to show what the uh, what the process is at the uh, at the site where you find them and uh, we're going to field dress them here it is nice if you can get it to a barn or something like that where you can uh, um, hang them up to do it but uh, we're going to do it just in the uh, in the field here and then uh, we're in the woods and drag them out to the field and get them with the uh, the ATV so let's uh, notch the tag and we'll get it uh, get them hooked up there are a ton of different methods that uh, that you'll see that uh, that people will uh, will use, and I want to uh, want to show you what uh, how I do it. The uh, um, I'm always afraid of testosterone and, and stuff sort of secreting back into the uh, into the meat. So one of the, the first things I do is uh, is take the scrotum off, and that uh, prevents any any type of sort of bad things coming back into the meat. It does uh, assist with the, uh, with the flavor. And I'm gonna take a, uh, a spot here and just make a, uh, an incision. We wanna make sure that, well, ideally, we don't wanna puncture the stomach because then you can taint the meat that way as well. Get my fingers into a little hole. Careful that you don't uh, cut yourself with this process. But we need to open up the stomach cavity and uh, be able to access everything inside. Nasty to see this. That the uh, arrow did that, but yeah. So you've got a. There are two tubes, obviously, the throat and at the uh, at the anus. You want to make the cut around the uh, the anus again as clean as possible because we don't want to cut any of the sacs that are actually going to let any of the matter that's in there um, escape. So. We've got to cut that end out and then we'll be able to pull through and then cut at the esophagus and just pull the uh, pull the whole thing out. So we're going to uh, 
uh, this is where it does get a little bit dirty. And I also keep an extra bottle of water in the truck just to, uh, to make sure I can get cleaned up when we get back. So that, uh, that's the next step, cutting around the, uh, the anus and then reaching in through here and uh, being able to access so we can pull all that stuff out. So, got the uh, the stomach out of it. There's the lungs, and that's a he was he was lung shot. There's the uh, there's the heart. No, uh, a little bit of a nick in the uh, in the heart. He only ran maybe 150 yards, not that far. He was he was well shot. He uh, he didn't suffer, and that's uh, I'm sorry that I'm dirty. It's, doesn't make for good film, but I mean that's uh, part of the reality of what we're uh, what we do when we get them in the woods. But so the stomach and the intestines and the esophagus, everything has come out clean, and uh, I don't think that there's going to be any spoilage in meat. We're going to tip them over and kind of drain them a little bit before dragging him out, and then uh, I'll do some more cleaning just to make sure that the uh, get as much fat as we can. But uh, this has been a a, a great a great cleaning the stomach bag and the intestines came out intact so there's no uh, no danger of meat contamination and that's really what uh, what I aspire to uh, to do but uh, yeah this uh, he was uh, he was long shot and uh, he only he didn't suffer at all in the, uh, a quick end so that's what we uh, again what we hope for what we want is an exposed body cavity and you can see it's nice and clean there's the uh, Entrance wound and the exit wound came out just on the uh, exactly on the on the other side I do like to trim as much of this off as uh, As possible the sooner the better. It's just kind of It's a little gory, but That's uh, it's gonna make the cleaning process the uh, a whole lot easier when we do get them uh, when we do get them home I want to keep as much hair as possible out of the body cavity Sometimes that's possible and sometimes it's not, but we'll uh, again clean as much of that out as possible. Well, that's uh, that's what we came here for. It's not a uh, not a monster buck, but he's going to be fantastic table fare. And you know what? When you're bow hunting, I believe that any deer that you get is a trophy, and that uh, it's going to feed my family. And uh, yeah, no greater feeling of satisfaction, I don't think, than putting. Uh, putting some venison in the freezer thanks to vortex I uh, understanding your range makes a pretty good shot you can see where I uh, was able to uh, to get that and thanks to fast track performance getting a deer out of the woods with an ATV and uh, being able to winch it up into a tree makes it a whole lot easier than trying to do it with just your arms there's a little bit that you could take from just about every episode you know we've talked right from the beginning about scouting driving around in the winter time finding properties that are going to hold deer getting landowner permission using Google Earth and iHunter and your phone to figure out where natural funnels are, pinch points, areas that you suspect deer are going to travel. Using trail cameras to identify where deer are actually traveling in order to pick your stand placements. What kind of stand am I going to use? How to set it up so that I'm not skylighted or you know a silhouette? To what gear to properly wear? What do I have to practice and prepare for in order to get that shot? And then finally you get that shot. Then what do you do? How long do you have to wait? And it's been really fun taking people right through the passion to plate as, uh, as we like to refer to it as some of it might seem really elementary and frankly some of it is and some of it might seem like it needs to go without saying but I think that like anything else there is a process and a formula to it and if you follow the process you follow the formula you will be successful and that was all our goal was was to be able to help shed a bit of light on what people need to do in order to be perhaps better at what their passion is taking them to do. Folks I'll just take a second here and say that is the essence of what the Real Outdoor Experience is all about. We love the outdoors. We love taking people into the outdoors and helping them learn from our mistakes, from our knowledge, from our experience. And we wanna share that with you so that you can in turn pass that on to somebody else. Stay tuned for the next one. It's gonna be one of my favorites, the cooking episode. It's Carl and Ian from the Real Outdoor Experience. And as always, keep it real. Thanks to take care for now, folks.